dear students in every science we have to do reasoning and to do reasoning it requires certain decorum certain rules this is why we are going to see some of those tools or regulations that we follow when we do the economic analysis using the mathematical tools now let's get started with the word that we use in our daily life as well which is known as logic logic is simply the art of reasoning how we reason to get to a conclusion now to do some logic we or to develop some logic we have to go through certain manners certain rules and regulations using which we can come to some sort of conclusion now we have two of them that are very much critical and one should know about first of all let us get started with the first one as you can see the etymology of logic is explained here again it's uh, of latin origin and it is taken from the latin word logica which means art of reason and in the process of logical reasoning we use two of the tools and the first one is propositions and the second one is implications the first one is propositions let's here split the meaning of this word and it's again from the latin origin and the word is proponere which means to propound or to propose so you can see that we are proposing something we are giving some idea floating some idea and an idea is likely to be either correct or false so there are true propositions and there are false propositions as an example all the individuals who breathe are alive it's a true proposition but if i say that all individuals who breathe are healthy it is likely to be false because not every living organism is healthy so you can see the propositions they are either true or false they can be imprecise as well if if i float the proposition 67 is a large number i need to define what large number means because there are so many larger numbers than 67 here mathematical tools help us to make a better proposition by rendering the conciseness and preciseness that we have already told about that it helps to come to conclusions in a more precise and concise way and the tools in mathematics all you, all of you have been told before algebra calculus trigonometry they help us now implications are also there what they do is that they connect the propositions in order to come to a certain conclusion and we use a certain arrow for it as you can see that arrow is having a point on right hand side and it is known as implication arrow we need to see an example now if proposition a is if if it is true then proposition b will be true so now we are connecting these two propositions and they are dependent the second one that is b depends upon the first one that is a so the arrow should run from a to b and in this way implication arrow helps us to develop propositions and connect them uh, we read that in a certain way that p implies q or if p then q or q is a consequence of p so we should know how to read these uh, connected propositions there are other examples if x is greater than 2 definitely square will be greater than 4 and if x and y they multiply to 0 either of them is equal to 0 and if x is a square then x is actually a rectangle so you see these propositions they are connected through the implication arrow now implication arrow can not only go in one direction it can come back and if it comes back that which means that uh, a is also dependent upon b in in that way we can say that it is a sort of equivalence and it is based upon propositions this is why we call it logical equivalence and suitably the arrow is pointing on both sides as you can see we have borrowed the same example that x y they gave a product of 0 because either of them is 
But if we look at it in, in, the, in the other way, either if x or y is 0, it will make the product equal to 0. So, this should be presented in a way where that two-pointed arrow should be used, which is known as uh, equivalence arrow. And it is written in that way where the equivalence arrow is used. As you can say, E is having that is equivalent to B. So, we can uh, read it like that, that A is equivalent to B. Now, we come to the final part of this lecture. And uh, it's a very famous thing. We all know that in economics there are uh, necessary conditions and sufficient conditions. Uh, but now we, we shall try to link them uh, using, the, uh, using the tools that we have just studied. I'll straight away come to the uh, example that we just saw. A is equivalent to B. And afterwards, um, uh, because this A is equal to B, is going to help us. This is actually a way of writing the necessary and sufficient condition. And you can guess that how simple it is. I'm taking that example that all of us have studied in microeconomics, that uh, profit maximization, how it takes place, the condition is there. MC is equal to MR. And uh, MC curve cuts the uh, M MR curve from below. Collectively, if I say, if MC cuts the MR curve from below, both of the requirements are being fulfilled. So, I can say, just like written here, if MC cuts MR from below, logical equivalence, profit is maximized. Because if MC cuts MR from below, it implies that profit is maximized. So, in this way, we can use the logical reasoning in order to explain economic situations in, in a more detailed way once we incorporate the mathematical tools in it. Thank you.